Hello everyone, my name is Vinuta. Welcome back to the <coughs> digital design classes. <coughs> so, to yesterday, in the previous lecture, uh, we have seen what do you mean by Boolean function, how the Boolean function is represented in a different way using truth table, using Boolean equation and using the digital uh, circuit. So, uh, and also we have seen what are the different methods to uh, represent the Boolean function that is using canonical forms and non-canonical forms. And we have started with the uh, understanding of canonical forms. In canonical forms, there are two methods. Again, we can represent the Boolean function in uh, sum of product method or using product of sum method. So, we have also discussed at some extent the sum of product method. Now, to today uh, we will be discussing uh, more about the product of sum method. Before that, we will we'll just do the division of uh, sum of product method and we will also understand the digital logic gates. Uh, we have already seen the basic logic gates and or not and today we are going to see few more uh, gates which are fabricated into ICs. And now we also understand there are different logic systems are called positive and negative logic systems. We are going to understand what do you mean by positive and negative logic system and how it makes difference to the different gate level logics. And we also uh, going to visit the simplification methods of Boolean functions. So now let us start by <coughs> the revision of the canonical SOP method that is sum of product method. We have seen how to represent the Boolean function using sum of product method. So, before that we need to understand what do you mean by mean terms. So, again let me take the same example f1 equal to x plus y dash z. For this equation we are going to find out the mean terms. But what do you mean by mean terms? Mean terms are nothing but when we represent uh, the number of uh, variables, the number of inputs into the truth table and then every row will have one min term associated with it. How to represent that min term is when the input value is 0, we are going to take the uh, complement form of that input. If the input value is 1, then we are going to take the uncomplemented form of that input. So, we have already seen in the previous lecture. Again, let us do the revision x, y, z, these are the inputs and then we have, uh, let me write the mean terms first. As I said, the definition of the mean term, when the input is uh, 0, then we have to take the complement of that term. So, here in this mean term, the x is going to be in its complemented form that is x dash, y is also 0, z is also 0. So, we are going to uh, and these complemented form of each input and this is going to be the first min term. Similarly, for all other possible values, we are going to get the min term for this is x is 0. So, we have to take x dash, then y dash, then z. Similarly, for this we have x dash, y we have to keep as it is because the value of y is 1 in this case and then z is also have to be in a complemented form because the value of z is 0. Now, let us continue this then 1 0 0, 1 0 1, 1 1 0, 1 1 1. If I have all the, if I have to write all the mean terms, it is going to be x dash y z x because the value of x is 1 then y dash z dash x y dash z x y z dash x y z. So, these are the min terms for 3 input variable. Okay. So, even for 2 input variables we have seen in the previous class how to form the uh, min terms. So, once we have these min terms, now I have to check what is the value of the output and whichever the min term is producing the output 1, only those min terms I have to pick and I have to 
or all those mean terms together to get the function in the form of SOP, sum of product terms. So now for this we have this F1, okay. F1 is high in case of this, this, this. For these 5 values because I am directly writing these values because we have already done this exercise in the previous lecture. So now if I observe the output is producing 1 uh, for these 5 terms. So I have to pick the min term for these 5 terms, those are going to be this and these 4 and I have to add them together to get the sum of product expression of the Boolean uh, function. So that is going to be, let me write it in this way. So this is one term that is x dash y dash z plus x y dash z dash plus x y dash z plus x y z dash plus x y z. So this is nothing but the Boolean expression which is expressed using sum of product terms or even in other way we can tell it as sum of mean terms, yes. So I hope you, you got the uh, clarity, what do you mean by mean terms, how to write the mean terms for the given uh, set of inputs, given set of all possible set of inputs and how to write, how to represent the given Boolean expression into sum of product terms. So, <coughs> Once we have this, okay, this is also represented uh, in uh, multiple different ways. So let us try and understand. Now again, uh, we know that this truth table, I even can be read in the digital form, uh, sorry, decimal form. That is this, if I consider the decimal value of this is going to be 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to 7. So now if I consider uh, this uh, min terms are also called as are represented by a value or um, symbol called m, okay. m0 because this 0 is nothing but a decimal representation of this binary sequence. Similarly, all the min terms are represented using m j okay you know uh, then in a general format okay all the mean terms are represented by m j where j is nothing but a decimal equivalent of the given sequence so for example m4 is the mean term which is the name given to the <coughs> mean term which is equivalent to the decimal number 4 that is 100. Zero, zero. Okay. I hope you got this. Now the same expression can also be represented using the mean terms. So this is one mean term, this is another. Okay. So the SOP form we are going to get the ORing, ORing of multiple mean terms. The mean terms are nothing but ending of multiple input variables in its different forms. So now what is the mean term for this is m1. I can also write it as m1 and then this is m4 plus m5 then m6 plus m7. So I can write this SOP form either this way or this way. Again another representation is because we are using this sum, so I can use this summation symbol. Then I can write it as m1, m4, m5, m6, m7. So this is another way of representing because in your examinations they might ask you like this or there is another simplified method rather than writing m, we are going to write just write the index values, okay. Wherever your min term is producing high, only those uh, min terms index values are just given in the summation equation. So here this I can write it as, yes. So this is nothing but the sum of product representation of the given Boolean equation this. Then 
Now, now onwards, whenever we are representing any Boolean equation using sum of product or product of sum, we are going to use this simplified method. Okay, or even like any, you can use any of these, but this is generally uh, used everywhere to represent any Boolean equation in sum of product terms. So I hope it is clear. Okay. So now next, chain uh, Next, we will look into the another form of representing the equation that is product of sum. The product of sum is nothing but here sum of product that means each term is a product term then we are going to sum them together so that is why the name sum of product okay each term is a product term. Now in uh, another method that is product of sum method each term is going to be all term or a sum term okay so how to get that okay let us try and understand that so <coughs> i'm going to use this side of the truth table to make you understand what do you mean by uh, like how to represent the given expression in uh, some uh, product of sum term okay the product of sum to obtain the product of sum terms we have to get familiarized with a term called max term so what like we have min term in sop we have max term in pos so let us understand what do you mean by max term max term is very much similar to your uh, <coughs> min term but the symbols are uh, interchanged the operations are interchanged and also every variable is complemented okay complemented of the variable form whatever we are getting in mean term so for example now here this is represented as when we are uh, writing the max terms we have to keep in mind wherever we have a value 0 that variable is kept uncomplemented form and wherever the value is 1 that variable is kept in complemented form okay so that is just opposite to the min term in while writing the min term what we did we have taken the complement of the variable when the value is 0 but opposite to that when we have a value 0 we are taking uncomplemented form and then when we, the value is 1 we are taking the complemented form so let us see how to write this the max term for this x the value is 0 it is going to be in uncomplemented form then we are going to or it okay here we have a product term here we are going to have the sum term so then what is the value of y 0 then it has to be in uncomplemented form z 0 uncomplemented form so this term now we are going to call it as max term similarly let us write the max term for other combinations so here x will remain as it is y z is going to be in its complement form because we have 1 in place of z for this combination. Similarly x plus y dash plus z x <coughs> plus y dash plus z dash then x x dash plus y plus z then x dash plus y plus z z dash x dash plus y dash plus z this all is going to be complement complemented form or together we are going to get the max term for the entire truth table now to represent any boolean equation to represent this boolean equation we have to do opposite of the SOP in SOP what we have done we have picked all the terms which is producing high output which is producing high output but here in other case in uh, the uh, <coughs> POS case we are going to represent we are going to pick all the sum terms which are producing zeros. So, for this particular equation, 
these three max terms are producing the output 0. Then we have to pick these max terms and then and them, okay, and them together to get the canonical form equation. So that is it is going to be x plus y plus z into what is the next term x y dash z x plus y dash plus z then into x plus y dash plus z dash. So this is the POS okay, product of sum term that means each term is going to be a sum term and then we are going to take product of all these max terms which are producing the output 0. So now this equation is similar to what we have written in the previous case. This equation is equivalent to this, this equation is equivalent to the Boolean equation which we have represented using sum of product terms using these terms. Okay. I hope it is clear to you guys. Now, there are multiple methods where we can uh, <coughs> interchange, okay, where we can convert from POS form to SOP form. Now let us try and understand when we are trying to convert what kind of concept is going to help us. Now if you observe this min term and max, uh, max term and min term, okay. So let me write uh, this uh, beside each other z and then the equivalent max term, uh, min term is x dash, y dash, z dash. If you observe this, okay, are not these complement of each other? Yes. If I take the complement of x plus y plus z, yes, what I will be getting? According to the de Morgan's theorem, we have seen the de Morgan's theorem, when we have to take the complement of each other, what we have to do? we have to complement each variable and we also have to interchange the plus 2 dot and dot to plus. So similarly, if I have to write x is uncomplemented form, so it will become complemented plus becomes dot y dash z dash, is not it same as this? Yes. So min term and max term are complement of each other. So that is the reason that that is what will help us to convert from one form to another form, yes. So these uh, different forms of expressing the Boolean equation will, will be helpful when we have multiple uh, input variables because when we have multiple input variables representing in this way it will be very difficult. And while writing, if we miss one complement or uncomplement form, if we interchange, the entire circuit may go wrong. So we always use the shorthand method, what we have seen for the min terms, that is SOP format, whatever we have used the uh, shortcut format. The similarly, we can express this using the max terms. Like min terms, we are using small m, all the max terms are represented using the capital M with the uh, index, with the index value Mj, okay, where J represents the uh, decimal equivalent of each binary combination. So now this one, okay, this is nothing but M0 dot, okay, what is the next term? Uh, that is nothing but M2, then multiply, the next term is M3, that is capital M. So these are the product of max terms. So either you can represent like this or we can use the product symbol. Then I can write it as M0, M2, then M3. Okay. So another shorthand method for this which is commonly used is just specify the index values rather than even mentioning whether it is a max term because whenever we are using the product symbol, it is going to be whatever the index values are given here, those are mentioning the uh, index values of the max term, okay. Max term which is producing 0 as output. When it is a min term, okay, for min term we are going to use the, okay, this is SOP format and this is POS format. In POS format, we are going to use the max terms 
and all the match terms are added together. So, we are using the product symbol here and here in SOP form we are going to use the min terms and we are going to or them together. So, that is why we are using the uh, summation symbol. So, what are the min term which are producing the same output is, is nothing but M1, M4, M, uh, sorry, I, I need not even write M, I just have to mention the index values. These two are now equivalent uh, Boolean equation which is again equivalent to the given Boolean exp expression. So, any doubt in this? Okay. A quick recap for this given uh, truth table. Okay. Most of the time what happens is they will provide us the truth table. I want to design a circuit for the given truth table. Then what I have to do is I have to identify the ones. If I if I am representing that using SOP that is sum of product terms, then I have to identify the output or the min terms which are producing the high output or output 1. Then I have to uh, mention those min terms, min term indexes in this format. Then my equation is ready. Then if, if you want to design it using uh, product of sum format, then you have to identify all the uh, output zeros. Okay, all the combinations which are producing output zeros. Then you have to pick the max terms. Then you have to mention those max terms in the product format. So this is how we are going to represent one given expression. Okay, most of the time the expression will be specified in terms of truth table. That truth table we have to convert into Boolean expression in this way. Okay, so now now we will look into uh, the different gates. Okay. We have already seen the gates, uh, basic gates which are and or not gates. Okay. We have uh, seen how to represent them, their uh, symbolic representation and also their truth table. Okay. So, now we will see few more uh, gates which are basically derived from those basic gates or which are also fabricated into ICs for uh, faster uh, <coughs> execution. <coughs> now, uh, whatever we have seen, not gate. Okay. So, what is the symbol for the not gate? Which is already known to us x, if the input is given as x, the output will be x dash. Okay. And I also have mentioned in the in my previous lectures, the same thing can also be represented as x bar or x naught, but in all my lecture, lectures, I am using this particular representation of not gate. So, basically what this NOT gate does, whatever the value of x, it is going to invert it. Invert in the sense, uh, because the binary logic is containing only two possible values, whatever the value it is going to re replace it with another value. So, we have also seen the truth table. So, let me write this truth table, x and then x dash. If the value of x is 0, the value of x dash will be 1, the value of x is 1, the value of x dash will be 0. So, then the second gate is going to be OR gate. Okay. So, we have also seen the symbol of OR gate. So, very simple symbol. Yes. So, which is taking two inputs x and y, the output is going to be x plus y. The or is represented using the symbol plus, we have used so many times. Now, it is because it is a two input gate, we have to consider two inputs and all the possible 
0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, okay. Because it is the OR gate, we have seen by the definition of the OR gate, the output is produced high, the output is 1, when any of the input is 1 or all of the inputs are 1. So, by the definition, only in this case x plus y will be 0, all other cases it will be 1. So, <coughs> now the next gate is going to be AND gate, okay. The symbolic representation of the AND gate is also very simple and it also takes multiple inputs and then we have y is equals to x dot y. So, this AND operation is represented by dot and sometimes we just write x, y. The truth table for that is x, y, x dot y. So, again uh, we have to consider all the possible values of x, y. According to the definition of the AND gate, so it says the output is will be output will be 1 when all the inputs are 1. So, according to the AND gate definition only in this case it will produce high. So, all other cases it is going to produce low. So, we have already seen the working of these three uh, basic gates. Now, let us see few more gates which are called as buffer. Buffer looks very much similar to your NOT gate, but observe carefully it is not NOT gate. In NOT gate, the complement is represented by this small circle at the end of the triangle, but here we just have the triangle. So, what it does? It is a very simple circuit. So, whatever the value of x that is directly transferred to x. Now, you might be thinking what is the use of this? Why do I need uh, such a circuit which is producing, uh, which is transferring the data as it is, okay. Sometimes we will be having signal depletion to uh, enhance the signal, to improve the signal quality. Uh, sometimes we, we have to make use of such circuits where the same x is transferred here with the boosted um, energy or the boosted signal. So, this buffer it does as it says the output of if it is 0, 0, if it is 1, 1. It is as simple as that. Now, the next one is, okay, next two whatever we are I am going to discuss, those are called universal gates, okay. Uh, we will discuss in the further classes why they are called universal gates and uh, what exactly they are mean uh, to say universal. So, the first one is NOR. So, NOR is nothing but <coughs> OR with negative, okay, OR with inverter. So, let us see the symbol of it. This is similar to OR, then we have again two inputs x and y, then how it is different from OR is we have a small bubble we have a small bubble at the end of OR symbol. So, what is going to be the output of this Z equal to? So, what is the output of uh, OR gate x plus y? What is the output of NOR gate? The negation of x plus y, okay. This circuit is very much similar to your OR gate followed by a NOT gate, okay. This NOR gate is a combination of OR gate plus NOT gate. So, we have shrinked this and we have just put this bubble here to tell that this is not a OR gate, this is a NOR gate. So, what is going to be the output of this? First, it is going to OR all the inputs, first it is going to add all the inputs and then it is going to take the negation of that, that is a complement of that. So, now let us understand what is the uh, truth table says. So, again because this is a uh, two input NOR gate, we have to consider two inputs, then 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, okay. So, this is nothing but 
the complement of x plus y. Okay. I just have to complement this particular column. So, it is going to be 1 rest all cases it is going to be 0. Okay. I hope you understood. So, this NOR gate is nothing but the combination of OR plus NOT gate. So, so that is why we are going to get this z equal to x plus y complement. Okay. When I get the x plus y complement first I have to add these two the output is going to be 0 then I have to take the complement of that which is going to be 1. Adding these two is producing 1 the complement of that is 0. Similarly, I am going to get the complement of the uh, whatever the truth table produced by the R gate. Now, the next gate okay, is nothing but NAND gate. What is the symbol of NAND gate? Similarly, I hope you can guess now what, what could be the NAND gate. It is the similar version of your NOR gate, but using the AND gate. So, here the NAND gate would look like this. First, it looks like an AND gate with a small bubble in the front. So, now can you guess what is going to be the output? What output it might produce? Yes, you guessed it right. It is going to be first, it is going to add, uh, sorry, it is going to um, multiply or it is going to add all the inputs and then it is going to take the complement of that input. So, we will be getting x dot y the whole complement. Yes, if you observe this is nothing but a complement of this particular truth table. Now, if I have to draw the truth table for this NAND gate, it would look like this x y x dot y so, again consider all the possible values. Okay. So, it is going to be exactly uh, the complement of whatever the values we are getting for AND gate. So, for AND gate for this combination if I am getting 0 for NAND gate I will be getting 1. Similarly, all these zeros are replaced by 1 and this 1 is replaced by 0. Okay. So, this is the complement of NAND gate. So, how Again, if I have to represent this, this is nothing but uh, AND gate followed by the NOT gate. Okay. So, whatever the bubble of the NOT gate is attached to the same uh, AND gate to tell that it is not an AND gate, it is a NAND gate. Okay. I hope this is clear to you guys. And then similarly, we have few more, uh, two more uh, basic gates that is seventh one is going to be x or okay. um, it is not written as e x it is written as x r. This x r is uh, pronounced as exclusive or. Okay. So, now if you observe the uh, truth table of this or gate here uh, it is producing 0 and rest for every other combination it is producing 1. Now, this XOR produces the output 1 only when exclusively any one of the input is 1. When again it produces 0 for if all the inputs are 1. So, that is the difference between OR and XOR. XOR means exclusive OR it produces the output 1 only when both the inputs are different. Okay. So, what is the symbol of XOR? It is something like this x y. So, we are going to write one, sim, uh, one extra curve in the beginning of the uh, OR gate and this is a symbol of exclusive OR. So, the output of that is represented using the plus which is written inside the circle. This says that we are going to use the exclusive OR, not just OR, exclusive OR. The truth table for the exclusive OR, <coughs> I have to write it this way, x, y, 
x dash y. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. For as I have discussed earlier, exclusive OR produces high output only when the both the inputs are different. Okay. Only in these two cases I can find both the inputs are different, here also both are same, here also both are same. So, it is going to produce 0 and 0 here, psi. So, that is nothing but the about XOR. The symbol of XOR is very much similar to OR gate, but one extra curve is added in the beginning of the OR symbol. Now, the eighth one and the last one, we have XNOR. I hope you already guessed it. What do you mean by X nor? X nor is nothing but a complement of X or. Yes. So this one I can also write it in uh, as a Boolean function when when the output will be high when both are different when both the inputs are having different values. So the same thing I can write it as X dash Y plus X Y dash. The, the Boolean equation for the XR is going to be X dash Y plus X Y dash. So, for X nor it is going to be an exclusive OR with a bubble, yes, exclusive OR with a bubble in the front. So, here the X and Y, the Z is going to be X, XR, Y the whole complement. So, the same thing we can write it. So, when uh, the x nor k, okay, the truth table for the x nor is going to be opposite to x or. Wherever the x or is producing 0, it is going to produce 1 and wherever the x or is producing 1, it is going to produce 0. So, <coughs> now the same thing I can write it in the equation form as x y plus x dash y dash using mean terms if I construct the Boolean function then the mean term for this which produces high is going to be x y and the mean term for this is x dash y dash sorry the mean term for this is x dash y dash and mean term for this is x y. So, I am going to add them together similar for this uh, by getting the uh, summation of the mean term we are getting this equation. Okay. I hope I am, um, it is it's clear uh, of understanding how uh, different, how many logic gates we have and what output it is going to produce and each logic gate, how many inputs we have. I cannot have the uh, more than one input to the NOT gate and the buffer, yes, it does not make any sense. But when we have to consider the other gates. Sometimes it does make sense because we have seen uh, multiple Boolean laws like commutative laws, associative laws. Yes, if I have to uh, understand the commutative and uh, associative laws, I need to have the <coughs> multiple gates which are taking multiple inputs. Okay. I hope this is clear to you guys. Okay. Now, we will look into like which all uh, of these gates, which all of these gates we can have multiple inputs uh, in the sense um, when we want to have multiple input AND gates like we want to um, multiply 3 inputs rather than 2 inputs that can be achieved by cascading multiple AND gates or even sometimes there is a fabrication into ICs that uh, 3 input AND gates, 3 input OR gates. That is because this AND and OR are commutative, okay. Commutative in the sense what X dot Y dot Z okay. is, I can write it as X dot Y dot Z. The same thing can also be written as X dot Y dot Z. So, in whichever the order I give the input, it does not matter. So, in that case, 
it is useful to have the AND gate with multiple inputs. So, we already have uh, many ICs which are fabricated with multiple AND gates, multiple input AND gates and similarly because even uh, similar to this even the OR operation is uh, cumulative. So, uh, sorry it is uh, commutative not cumulative. So, we can have multiple input OR gates. Yes, if we do not have this then the same could have been achieved using cascading. cascading of multiple AND gates. So, here I could have given x, y, z and using this uh, <coughs> commutative laws then we could have get here x dot y dot z. But we have already have this multiple input AND gates. So, we can directly give multiple inputs, 3 inputs to get x dot y dot z. Similar to this again if we do not have this uh, available with us then we can have multiple OR gates uh, which are uh, used in the cascading form, 2 level OR gates we could have used. But what happens with the AND gate and uh, sorry NAND gate and NOR gate. So, this NAND and NOR are uh, commutative, but they are not associative. Let us understand what do, uh, what do you mean by associative and why they are not associative? So, this <coughs> uh, NOR operation is used uh, represented using this symbol down arrow, this is NOR operation. The same thing if I have to write it is going to be x plus y plus z dash this NOR means what? y plus z dash that means uh, the complement of y plus z and this nor means the complement of whole thing. So, now if I simplify this what I am going to get I am going to get x dash this plus would change to dot and then y plus z double dash which is again similar to y plus z. Then I could have uh, simplify this plus x dash z. If I take the associative of this that is x xor y xor z. Let us see if they are associative then whatever the simplified version I am getting here the same should be uh, same I should get here. Now, let us see this is represented as x plus y dash plus z the whole dash. Now, if I have to simplify this it is going to be x plus y double dash dot z dash. This double dash cancels each other because of the uh, inversion law then it would become x z dash plus y z dash. Okay. If you observe this these two are totally different that is uh, what I meant when I said the NOR operation and NAND operation are not associative. So, I cannot I cannot interchange the inputs to get the same output, but when we use the uh, NOR gate ok, when we use the NOR gate uh, in cascading form then I have to take care of in what order I have to give the input. But when we have the multiple input NOR gate, when we have the multiple input NOR gate it is going to produce it this way x plus y plus z the whole dash. It is not going to take any of this commutative uh, associative laws it is directly going to produce this x plus y plus z the whole dash. The same thing with the uh, multiple input NAND gates. Using the same uh, laws you can even prove that this is not associative, NAND gate is not associative then it is going to produce y plus the whole dash. I hope this is clear to you. We have multiple gates and we also have 
uh, gates with multiple inputs, more than two inputs. So now, <coughs> the next topic I am going to discuss is about the logic system. So till now, we were discussing the variables can have the values, only two values that is 0 and 1. Okay. How to identify which is 0 and which is 1? The basically, whatever the input we are going to give to the ICs or the gates are going to be in the form of current or voltage. Yes. So now, what do we do to identify it as 1 or 0? We identify one particular voltage level as 1 and another particular voltage level as 0. Now, let us understand this. If I have this particular voltage level, okay. So, this voltage I am going to consider it as 0 voltage, I do not provide any current there, then I am going to consider that as 0. If I provide some voltage, for example, if I provide the voltage up to 5 volts, so this is 0 volt and this is plus 5 volt. Now, I consider this plus 5 volt or some range from 4 to 5 volts. I, uh, if my voltage level is between 4 to 5 voltage, uh, 4 to 5 volts of uh, voltage, then I am going to consider that as uh, logic 1. Okay. So, that is how our circuits are implemented. By uh, for, for the given voltage levels, it is going to identify whether the lo it is logic 0 or logic 1. So, now there are two different logic systems. So, that is we have positive logic system and then we have negative logic system. So, <coughs> now let us try and understand what is the difference be between these two and when I change from one logic system to another logic system, what changes uh, will happen to the truth table, what changes will happen to the particular operation of the gate. So, now in positive logic system, when we have two different voltage levels, which one has to be considered as 0 and another one has to be considered as 1. In positive logic system, whenever the voltage is high, it is considered as 1 and whenever the voltage is low, lower voltage level is considered as 0. Okay. So, that is what the positive logic system says. So, now let us understand uh, with a simple truth table. So, <coughs> if I have the truth table as like this, I am going to use here high and low rather than 0 and 1 because 0 and 1 depends on what kind of logic system I am going to use. Okay. So, high or let me start with the low, this is low, high, then high, low, high, high and here I have this as one simple circuit which is producing whenever the uh, voltage level is low, it is both volt input voltage levels are low, it is going to produce low and here it is going to produce low and in this case also it is going to produce low. It is it will produce the high voltage or the uh, high level uh, only when both the inputs are given as high that is the 5 voltage. So, now what happens in the positive logic system? In the positive logic system as I said we are going to consider logic 1 whenever the voltage is high and whenever the voltage is low we are going to consider that level as 0. So, now the same truth table would look like this when I am using the positive logic. So, low, low means 0, 0, this low is also 0 and 0, 1, 0, then 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, sorry, this is also low, so it has to be 0. Now, if you look at this truth table, is not it very much similar to your AND gate truth table? Yes, it is exactly AND gate truth table. So, 1, only when all the inputs are high or all the inputs are 1, your output is 1. Otherwise, it is going to produce 
0 output. So now what happens in the negative logic system? In the negative logic system again the input is going to be in terms of voltage yes. So now but the convention the convention what do we use to represent the 1 and zeros will be different in the negative logic system. In the negative logic system this plus 5 volts and this is 0 volts here when the voltage level is low we are going to consider this as 1 and when the voltage level is high we are going to consider this as 0. If you observe it is just opposite to the positive logic system. If the same truth table I have to realize I have to understand using the negative logic system how does this look like x y z low is considered as 1 so this is 1 1 1 high is considered as 0 1 0 1 and high is 0 0 1 1 and this is all zeros. Yes, what do you get to your mind by looking at this? Yes, this is nothing but a truth table for OR gate. Yes, so this if I just change the uh, <coughs> negative positive logic to negative logic your AND gate will work exactly same as OR gate. Yes, so that is why it is very important to understand the different logic systems when to use the positive logic, when we are using negative logic, we have to mention it explicitly. So now this AND gate is represented as AND gate only like, like there is no change in the AND gate. When we are using the uh, positive logic for the given problem statement, for the given truth table that will uh, work exactly like a AND gate. But when we are mentioning when we are using the negative logic then this we have to mention mention it specifically by using a small triangle like this. This small triangle in the beginning and uh, in uh, for the input and output uh, lines indicates that this is the AND gate with a negative logic which is working as a OR gate. Yes, so th that is all about the positive and negative logic. So all these uh, zeros and ones are realized based on the input voltage or current given to it. So the specific range of voltages are considered as zero our specific range of voltages are considered as 1. So now which level of voltage we consider as 0 or 1 that decides based on the positive and negative logic. In positive logic high voltage level we are going to consider it as 1 and the low voltage level we are going to consider it as 0. In negative logic opposite to that we are going to consider the low voltage as 1 and the high voltage as 0. But whenever we are using the a negative logic we have to mention it specifically uh, that we are using the negative logic with a symbol just a small triangle symbol to all the input and output lines because I have to understand this is not exactly a OR gate but it is a AND gate which is working as a OR gate in case of using of negative logic. I hope this is clear to you. Uh, the different logic system and when the uh, when we switch from one logic system that is positive logic system to the negative logic system how the working of your gate is changed. So <coughs> yes so now uh, after understanding this positive and negative logic let us uh, take few examples on whenever any um, form any um, Boolean equation in the canonical form is presented how uh, to simplify that because whatever the next topic I am going to discuss that is about the K map uh, is very much simplified 
method okay it's a, a very authentic method to simplify any given boolean equation so now um, but before that if i try to um, simplify using manual method uh, how it is done and how it is difficult when the inputs uh, the number of inputs are getting higher and higher so to understand that let us take one simple example yes i hope you understand this uh, symbolic representation now what does this mean this means we have represented the given equation in the form of sum of product terms so what is this these are the indices of the mean terms mean term which is representing the decimal 1 and mean term representing decimal 3 5 and 7 now yes i hope i need not uh, write the truth table to understand or i need not write the all the mean terms representing this so what we can do is one is represented using 0 0 and here one more thing sometimes when they are giving the uh, function they will mention it this way f1 x y z or sometimes f1 a b c okay. so if they are mentioning it this way i can understand how many input inputs are required if some nothing is mentioned here then i have to understand that by uh, looking at the indices so here what is the maximum index given here 7 okay so to represent the numbers from 0 to 7 only 3 bits are enough yes so that is the reason i have to take i am considering only 3 bits if there is consider if there is another uh, called 9 and 11 Okay, so what is the highest value? Highest index represented here is 11. To represent 11, 3 bits are not enough. Then I have to consider the 4 bit inputs. So now, for our example, we have only up to 7. Then only 3 bits are enough. So what is the bit sequence which is representing 1? Is this the mean term for this is x dash y dash z? then 3 is represented as this then x dash y z then 5 is represented as 0 <coughs> then it is uh, x y dash z then what do we have here is 1 1 1 which is nothing but x y z okay so now the same thing we are going to represent using taking all of these mean terms and again you have to remember whenever we are representing using sum of product terms we are going to consider only the mean terms which are producing the high output okay output 1 so only these terms are producing high output so we are not going to consider the other mean terms which are producing the output as zero so now the same equation is represented as sop is x dash y dash z then x dash y z plus x y dash z plus x y z now we have four uh, product terms which are added together to get sum of product terms now again now what we have to do is if i have to realize this using a uh, boolean logic circuits then i need three input and gates three input four and gates yes and then i need one or gate which is taking four inputs so that is why what uh, if i can simplify this to get less number of circuits then let us see how to do that so now again we have to use the theorems what we have used uh, what we have learned in the previous lecture basic boolean theorems then using that now i have to identify what is the common factor in these two terms so x dash y is here x dash y is here so i'm going to take sorry x dash z x dash z 
and then what remains inside is y dash plus y. And again in these two terms are there any common terms we have xz xz. So let us take this xz outside and then what remains here is y dash and y. So with this we already know that according to the uh, idempotent laws we have y dash plus y is equal to 1 then I can write it as into 1. Similarly here also we have y dash plus y which is always equal to 1 x z into 1 then again according to the identity laws we know that anything multiplied with 1 will be this it is going to produce the same output as this. So then you can write it as this plus x z. Now can we simplify this further more? Yes, we do have a common factor here z. So I can get a, get this z out then what remains is x plus x dash. Again according to the idempotent law when there is a summation of x and its complement it is going to produce 1. So I am going to get this as 1 then what finally remains according to the identity law anything multiplied with 1 is going to produce the same thing as output. Now if you look at this equation where do where we need 4 3 input AND gates and 1 4 input OR gate but here in this case I just need one buffer which transfers z to the output. So now for any given equation I can use this method okay I can use this simplification method to get the simplified circuit and when I use this simplification method I might get different different outputs at different levels depending on which are the terms I am going to combine the output or the simplified version of the output may change. But what happens now we have only uh, 3 input bits but what happens if I have multiple inputs more than 5, 6, 7 inputs in that case this method will become very clumsy and very difficult. So that is why we have another uh, few simplification methods those are called K maps and Queen McCluskey method. For your syllabus we will be discussing only K map that uh, again we will be discussing in the next session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video.